Welcome back to the V Brown Bag. Bill Day here in Houston at HP Enterprise, looking at the HC380. And joining me today is Greg Park. Hi, Greg. What's your uh, title here at HP Enterprise? I'm a pre sales technology consultant. So I work in a group that does a lot of hands on. We work with customers face to face, putting these in place, helping them with proof of concepts, uh, implement whatever problems they have. We try to help them solve those. And do and you then bring a lot of the, the learning from the things that customers need to do back in and feed that back into customer uh, into development? I do. I talk to our marketing and development team quite a bit. So, so you're the, the product manager's have, favorite person. I am. Always have they, suggestions. They, they all have me on their ignore list on their email. <laughs> yeah, this guy's. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to talk about with the HC380 is what the deployment scenarios are, are like about putting clusters of these out. A lot of the time with a hyperconverged solution, you you always need a majority node cluster. You need a multiple set of nodes and, and under any failure you need more than half of the nodes to survive. And that's why normally we see a three node minimum for a hyperconverged solution. Talk me through what's required if I want less than three nodes sure. of HC380. So we do support two nodes with the HC380 and then we needed something to determine, am I alive, is he alive, what's going on? So we have a quorum drive out there. Uh, it can be a simple NFS share. We have a thing called a failover manager. It can be either one of those products. And that will determine, hey, you know, it, the, the two 380s can look at that and they can determine did one die, did, you know, my life, who's alive. So Quorum can do that. Dealing with the, um, that possibility of a split brain that yeah, you get with a two node cluster. Yeah, exactly it. All right. and, and so just to be clear, the failover manager, or sometimes the referred farm. as the farm, mm -hmm. that was always a virtual machine yes. that ran the left hand now store virtual software but with no storage on it. Yes. But we've now got the ability to use just an NFS share Inefficient. as a core. Yeah. So if I've got um, maybe two of these running my virtualization platform, but I've got a filer of some sort at the mm -hmm. site, the filer could be that core and I wouldn't need Absolutely. to have some virtualization host for it. Absolutely. And, and or it could be a remote site. We have, uh, we have customers who put these out in remote sites and then maybe Houston's the main data center. I create that NFS share here and it, it's NFS so I don't need a whole lot of bandwidth there. I think it's 300 milliseconds time from there, so it's forever so, yeah. in computer terms. One NFS share for multiple of these clusters, or is that you can. a, a Yeah, it right? could be one for multiples, and there's a little file it creates in there, so each one has right. its own file. So you can have one that I administer in, da in a data center, administer NFS is easy. And then as we go past two, do we prefer having odd numbered nodes if it's if it's available? Does that, Do we care? We don't care, even though you might get into discussion how you do RAID 10 on odd numbers, but that's actually due to the storage system. Um, we, it, it really doesn't matter. I've, uh, most of the uh, installs I see tend to be odd numbers, and I think that's just just, just a mental state of in there. This, this is uh, how you do. I see a lot of classes. threes, fours, and then ten. So I'm not sure right. why we go from four to ten, but um, but, we but do it does. It's right. it's one of those. Maybe it's binary one zero. So yeah. red gen. gen <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then it's a, a single cluster is a 16 node maximum for 16 the, node. We, right. we can argue with guys internally if you want more. We do have support processes right. to do more. You know, if you're supporting more than 16 nodes in a cluster, you might have that question. Is, is, that, it, is really? that an architectural yeah. sensible decision? Exactly. Because the cluster is conceptually it's a failure domain and yeah, you're making it pretty large by the time you've got 16 same. of these. So um, you can do 32, but right. it, again, we support 16 officially. Call us and we'll talk to others. If I've got a cluster already built with two, three, four nodes and I, I need more capacity, how easy is it to add additional nodes to that cluster? It, it, it's simple. You drop the node into the rack, plug it in, and then go to your one view instant on and say add node. Wait five, six minutes and now you have a storage. And that will take care of all the storage expansion and everything for you. So now you've added X terabytes. And it, it does the um, vCenter integration as well it, and adds, adds the node in. to vCenter yeah. and, yeah, and so adds it into the cluster. ESX node number five, for example, shows up, you can see it, and then my VSA will grow, so my storage has grown, yeah. and you did nothing but plug it in and say and, and add. Presumably oh. there's a background data rebalance in there as well there as I add, yep. add capacity. But, but you don't have to do anything to it. That's all done underneath the hood by the the, the storage software, the VSA underneath, will balance that and do that for you. So nice. it's uh, um, pretty hands-off. Well, thanks, Greg, for discussing cluster sizes and some of the, the considerations around the cluster sizes. We're going to try and mine more information out of Greg. He's <laughs> uh, has been busy. We wanted to get him in here earlier today, but he had to go and, and deal with some issues at a customer uh, and make them happy. Uh, so we're going to get a bit more out of his brain and we'll hear a bit more from Greg. So thank you very much for joining me, Greg. Thank you.